I don't know how many of you were in marching band when you were younger. Like I was in marching band and I will tell you this. I was part of two separate high school marching bands. One is I went to high school in one place for four years and I was part of that marching band freshman year. It was really nice. Loved the people. Had a great time. I quit after freshman year because I had other priorities at that point in my life. But I'll tell you this. In eighth grade, the summer before I entered high school, I was living in another state. I was living, uh, I, I wasn't sure if we were moving or not. So that summer before high school started, I went to band camp. I know, make your jokes. But I went to band camp for a different high school where they didn't just have a marching band. They had one of those marching bands that's so good, they go to competitions and like win competitions. So that summer after eighth grade, like not only did I learn how to do marching band stuff, like I'm looking at schematics of like where I'm supposed to stand to make all the neat formations on the field, learning how to play my instrument better, of course, yay trumpet, um, but also learning, oh, this is what it's like to be part of a real marching band. It was really cool. Had I stayed in that school, I totally would have been obsessed with that because it's such a neat thing when you're part of a group that does that well. And if you've ever, if you're not part of that culture or you haven't seen it before, like go right now, go to YouTube, search like marching band competition and watch some of these performances like the halftime shows of big college games because those bands are friggin' incredible. It's not like everyone is in sync. Everyone is creating these amazing routines. You have so many different moving pieces that come together to do all this stuff. It's really neat. Um, and so when they're good, they can be really incredible. So I recently saw a video uh, where they were talking about a marching band. I'm going to come back to that in a second. I'll come back to that. Um, but I want to show you this video because... It was pretty fascinating what they did. I'm going to move myself out of the way here. Uh, let me stop sharing this. And I'm going to play this. I saw this on TikTok. This is a guy who said, I saw this band, and it seems to be kind of religious. What is up with that? And the one thing I should tell you about this TikTok video is that he is referring to something called the Bands of America Grand National Championships in Indianapolis. And that's kind of like the Super Bowl for marching bands. So he was watching the like championship match and like the greatest bands in the country are there performing their routines and one of them is going to be champion. I'm not sure the details of how all that works, but he saw one band on the live stream or whatever. And he's like, wait a minute, why is this happening? Let me play this TikTok. I'm going to Make myself small here. You ever get to that point where you think that you've just about seen it all and then you come across something that just makes you go, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, I found one of those. And it has to do with a marching band. Joining us from Piercy, Arkansas, please welcome the Lake Hamilton High School Marching Band. Lake Hamilton's program is entitled Revival and features the music of Alison Krauss, Randall Stanbury, Toronto Grantham, and various American spirituals. Fans of America is proud to present a grand and national preliminary performance. Drum majors Chloe Hayes, Serenity McNeely, and I am going to stop it there. And the reason is the music kind of takes over and it's kind of hard to see everything on that field. But I will show you uh, bigger versions of what they're doing. But he was right. That was the Lake Hamilton Marching Band. And this is the picture that you may have seen right there. Uh, Sinners beware. Repent now. The path to righteousness. Uh, they also... On the field, they had little uh, benches for different performers to play on. And you could see at one point they brought all those benches together to make a giant uh, Christian cross right above me right there. And the name of this program was titled Revival.
because they did an entire marching band theme on Christian tent revivals, like a fundamentalist Christian tent revival. Just wild. So this is Lake Hamilton High School. It's in Piercy, Arkansas. It's a really good band. I'm not saying that in any like sarcastic way. You could see it from their performance. They knew what they were doing. I have nothing bad to say about the kids here. I have plenty of stuff to say about their directors. Um, but they, this is the show they performed during halftime of all the football games. And then they competed at this big event at the end of the season. Um, but here's the thing. Typically, some of these marching bands, they might have themes that are like Marvel movies, Star Wars, Disney, whatever it is. It's not weird to have a theme. It is very weird to have a theme that basically pushes fundamentalist Christianity as if that's a fun, exciting theme. And even if you have like some popular music, they mentioned like Alison Krauss, who's a popular uh, musician, but also it's a lot of spirituals, which again, in context, that's one thing. When that's the only thing on the menu, though, it's weird. Um, in addition to those banners, they all dressed up like stereotypical fundamentalists. The girls all had skirts going down to their ankles. The boys all wore suits and vests. Even the color guard, you know, flipping all the flags and everything, their flags were like red, yellow, and orange, the color of fire, because can't have brimstone without the fire. Um, and by the way, can you imagine if you're not a cisgendered kid in that band? And band draws a lot of, you know, LGBTQ students. If you don't want to dress like whatever gender you're assigned at birth, that could pose a problem. I know that's a side point, but like just saying, that's weird. So now, after all that, uh, the Freedom From Religion Foundation is getting involved. I showed you this earlier. They're urging that school district to end it's revival like halftime shows. They actually sent a letter to the school district. And I'm going to share with you just uh, one piece of that letter right here, because I, I like the way this is phrased. Religion is a divisive force in public schools. Choosing a religious theme and props for marching band performances alienates those non-Christian students, teachers, and members of the public whose religious beliefs are inconsistent with the message being promoted by the school, including the nearly one in three Americans who now identify as religiously unaffiliated. These students certainly should be commended for their hard work that led them to the semifinals of Bands of America Grand Nationals. But there are plenty of appropriate secular alternatives that the band director could select that would utilize their clear work ethic and talent more appropriately, which, yeah, that's absolutely true. Why the hell did the directors choose this as opposed to anything else? And just to be clear, there is a place for religious music to be incorporated into any public school music program. Um, but that is a far cry from choosing an explicitly Christian theme for anything, much less a high school marching band's halftime show, which means they spent months working on this one show. So that's messed up. And by the way, we sometimes talk about how if a football coach wants to lead prayer or there's, you know, Joe Kennedy from Washington State, how he wanted to pray at midfield and the kids would surround him. One of the things we talk about is the coercion that goes on when that happens, because if you want to stay on the coach's good side because you look up to the coach or because you might want a recommendation scholarship, you want them to put in a good word for you down the road. You don't want to rock the boat. You don't want to say no. And the same thing is true in, in a marching band where the kids spend even more time together in close proximity and they're close to the directors and all that, that makes it even harder to say to the director who chose the whole show and choreographed it, like, I don't think this is right. It, that burden should not be on the students. It's up to the adults in the room to say, this is inappropriate. We can't put our kids through this. Um, the person who works for FFRF who wrote that letter told me, the kids shouldn't have to do any of this. The adults in charge should know better and do better. And one last thing I will show you, uh, Bands of America, if you go to the website for that competition, this is what you'll see. Uh, Bands of America is a program of a larger nonprofit called Music for All. Music for All. It's for everybody except apparently uh, non-Christians because at this school, they don't really 
seem to care about those people. So that's uh, that's messed up. Uh, I've I've seen so many stories about you know public schools trying to push religion on kids. Just last week, we talked about Christian prayers delivered over the intercom, and we've we've all heard about laws trying to get Ten Commandments in classrooms. Uh, or like I mentioned, football coaches trying to pressure kids into praying. I can't remember seeing many stories about high school marching bands using their shows to promote Christianity. But if they get away with this, if this Lake Hamilton school gets away with this, you can bet a lot of those schools in the South are going to try to pull off something similar. A lot of Christian hymnals, things like that. And that would be a horrible idea.